Darren Aronofsky returns to the big screen after the three-year hiatus since his last directorial effort, Noah. But is this new film more artful expressionism or another example of mismarketing? I'm Jamie, I watched Mother, and this is We Need Movies. Yes, fine viewers, it's been a while and I have the beard to prove it. Heads up, there will be spoilers in the middle of this video from here to here. But if you know Darren Aronofsky and his prior works like Pi, Requiem for a Dream, and The Fountain, then you know we have a lot to discuss. Based on the trailer, the film is sold like a psychological horror. But again, if you know Darren Aronofsky, then you know this film is a fucked up film with a message. Mother is a film about a husband and wife who are holed up in this remote mansion in the countryside. The husband, played by Javier Bardem, is a famous poet who has lost his motivation to write. Jennifer Lawrence is the wife and main character of the film. She feels as though Javier is distant lately and never giving her the attention that she truly deserves. She has been minding the renovations of their house, breathing new life into the magnanimous mansion through tireless hard work. Soon into the film, Ed Harris and Michelle Pfeiffer come to the house and Javier's incessant hospitality welcomes them with open arms. Jennifer doesn't like it, and so she asks Javier if they can leave. He refuses, wanting to be welcoming to all of his fans. Her suspicion of the unwelcome house guest grows as they begin to act like the house is their own. Okay, enough pussyfooting around. I need to talk spoilers from here on out until here. So jump to this time code to skip spoilers. You probably should. Seriously, do not watch this if you want to see the movie. It will shape your knowledge of the film, and I feel that you should watch it fresh first. The film is an allegory about Mother Nature and the Creator, God. Thanks to Collider, by the way, for this brilliant write-up that I'm using to explain the premise to you. Uh, the link is in the description below. The story begins with just the happy couple. Mother is fixing up the house, while the poet is struggling to create his next masterpiece. He's had a permanent writer's block, and it's tearing him apart. You're tearing me apart, mother! When Ed and Michelle enter the household, they represent Adam and Eve. Mother wants the creator to herself, but he so desperately wants to entertain for these folks. God is about his followers, and she says it best at the end of the film. You don't love me, you just love that I love you. Powerful shit right there, seriously good. Adam and Eve enter the office, which is the forbidden chambers of God. And they break the fire crystal that he holds on a literal pedestal in that office. Instead of kicking them out, it just prompts them to barricade the room from their entry. This is an allegory for the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden. Once that happens, Adam and Eve commit the original sin and fuck in their room. Literally, they start having sex. Soon after this moment, their kids come into play, and they, in turn, represent Cain and Abel. They fight over money, and eventually one dies. I honestly don't remember which one's which. I'm not much of a biblical person. But anyway, the family and God bring that son to the hospital. The other son runs away, leaving Mother Nature by herself. The family comes back home after this ordeal to mourn their son and have a celebration of life for him. But God is delighted by all of his house guests and welcomes them, even if Mother Nature never agreed on them. She eventually gets infuriated when no one listens to her, and it's a running gag. She's always like shit on. She's never treated right. Everybody ignores what she says. Uh, and especially there's a scene where people keep sitting on the sink and the sink's unbraced. We can't sit on this. We can't sit on this over and over again. And people keep fucking doing it. At one point, this girl is just literally just jumping up and down. It's fine. It's fine. And breaks it. And then through that, the water comes out and that's supposed to represent the flood. And it forces everybody to leave. The house is very quiet. She lashes out at God asking why he won't fuck her. And they have sex. So the whole time, like they're alluding to the fact she wants to have a child but God never did, and all of a sudden now he's like, oh yeah, I want children, when asked about it from Adam and Eve. So after doing the deed, she's immediately pregnant, and we have a proud expectant mother. God is inspired to write again, and writes essentially the Bible. Meanwhile, she sets the house all neat and tidy for her baby. 
Later, she's about to burst, <laughs> and they again receive unexpected guests, including paparazzi and God's publicist, played by Kristen Wiig, as essentially a herald of the Lord, a prophet. This time, the party gets extremely out of hand. I mean, to the point where it's like surreal. There's riots and murders, uh, looting, promiscuity, and more devious deeds. She gives birth, and God finally focuses on her and the baby and locks them away in the office of Eden. The fans outside desperately want to see the Son of God, but Mother wants them to leave. God doesn't want his admirers to go away. He wants them to share in the joy. She protects him from God for a solid day and a half, maybe like an hour a year or so in this allegory, but soon she falls asleep. And right after that, God snatches the baby away, displays him to the world, until they take him and kill him and then inexplicably eat his body. Well, of course, that's the crucifixion and the communion of the Catholic sense. She loses it and destroys the home with all of the people in it by setting the place ablaze. God then takes her burning body and she's asking, what are you? And he takes the essence out of her through her, through her heart and makes a new fire crystal and puts it on that very same pedestal. Very different markings and shape, everything like that, but it resets the house with essentially a new mother earth another planet like he messed up he's gonna try it again and everything gets brought back to its original look that pedestal you know could also mean that the husband puts his ex-wife on a pedestal and beholds her to a level that his new lover could never attain that of course is an allegory to relationships and it's not just because I was married once I just picked up on that other things like the paparazzi uh, could be about the whole celebrity status and a uh, celebrity marries a civilian that civilian has to deal with her husband's fame and it may represent the fact that she always has to share her husband with everybody else in the world she can't just have time alone with him there are also elements of the film that that i have yet to find a parallel for maybe somebody else has uh, in the biblical context anyway such as why is ed harris a doctor does it matter that adam is a doctor also, what was that medicine that mother kept taking? I mean, it was like a, this like sizzling life essence, essentially, in like this powder form she put in water. Uh, maybe it's like the primordial ooze or soup or whatever, if you will. Does Cain have to come back to the house to scare mother nature? Or is that illustrating the disgusting nature of man? Okay, spoilers finally over. <laughs> That's a much longer spoiler segment than I usually have. So I'll be honest, I initially did not like this film. When leaving the theater, I thought it was utterly confusing, and while I knew it represented something, I also knew that I didn't understand it. I was ready to give it a low score, but then I ruminated on it and read some of the theories that I mentioned in the spoilers above, and man oh man, did it completely change the film for me. It still took a while, it took me a couple days to really process what I was thinking, but I kept thinking about it. That was the great thing, this movie continued to stay in my mind and gave me something to think about. It was really cool, I like films that can do that to me, and it's not always the case, especially now. And it definitely changed my perspective of the film and turned a seemingly confusing tale into one of brilliance. Kudos to Darren for crafting such a great conversational piece and a truly unique take on such classic story elements. I give Mother, a four out of five stars. So what were your thoughts on Mother? Did you initially like it? Did you initially read into what we discussed in the spoilers? Let's actually discuss it in the comments below. But be forewarned people, we will definitely talk spoilers in the comments. So tread lightly. I'm going to avoid recommending the typical YouTube fare by saying don't comment unless you've seen the film. Follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash we need movies or on Twitter at we need movies. If you ever have any comments or questions or suggestions for movies to, for us to discuss or some, anything like that, honestly, we'd love to hear your feedback. We are at we need movies yt at gmail.com. Subscribe below and be sure to like the video and follow me on guyonawire.com. That's guy on a wire, like man on a wire, and read my potential top films of 2017 so far and my ongoing cancer story. I also host a podcast called Not Quite Hollywood that posts every Thursday there as well. Until next time, I'm Jamie and Mother. We need movies. God. She has been minding the renovations of, the, of their house. <clears throat> she has been minding the res She has been minding the rever Fuck me. Mother.